14 officers are working almost around the clock to locate the murderer or murderers of three Dallas County people. Now in the hands of all North Texas officers are composite drawings of two suspects. The renderings are of a pair of white males, 35 to 44 years old, seen at the donut shop shortly before one of the victims, Susan Darlene Shaw, was discovered missing. One of the men has a tanned, distinctly weathered face sort of like that of an outdoor worker. The Mesquite Criminal Investigation Department feels that at this time their best lead is that of a description of a 53 or 54 blue and white Chevrolet sighted in the area where the bodies of Mr. and Mrs. Forrest Covey were found in Hunt County. Was the worker a fair employee, part of a larger pattern of nationwide killings? Investigators here are following fares in Shreveport and Phoenix, but they are about to rule this possibility out. The suspect had Texas license plates on his car, and from the location where the bodies were found, he seemed to know the area pretty well, he said. Mesquite citizens are worried and concerned. They're taking special precautions at night to make sure that this sort of thing doesn't happen again. Many are calling in with information, which police are accepting gratefully. As Sergeant C.D. Hughes, coordinator for the investigation, said, someone may have some important information, but doesn't realize the importance of it. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Judy Hanna in Mesquite. The people working there, yeah. they were leading the voters. What do you in, mean by voting? Well, on the, on the ballot, you know, it was two names, my name and my opponent. And, uh, see, most people there didn't know how to fill out a ballot, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, CAA ballot. So they were tend to uh, point to the candidate they wish for, you know, for them to vote for. There were other complaints of a similar nature filed. The only other type of complaint filed tonight was by people who speak Spanish. They said that circulars or flyers should have been put out, particularly on north side of Fort Worth, in the Spanish language, telling people how to vote in the CAA election. Two persons filed written complaints about that. They said that on the near north side, circulars in Spanish were provided, but on the far north side, they were not. Those two people who filed that complaint, representing about 10 to 12 percent of the population of the area, did not show up at the meeting tonight. I talked to one of them by telephone, and he said, yes, I remember complaining about that. I don't remember whether I ever put it in writing. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move, at the CAA headquarters in Fort Worth. Oh, there isn't any question but that uh, housing, a free and open housing market will have a very positive impact on schools and on the composition of schools. Obviously, the people of America, for the most part, are reluctant to go to school together. How long do you think it will be before they're ready to live together in the same block? Oh, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that people are reluctant to go to school together. There are a lot of other complicated problems that are that are involved, and I would Let me qualify that by saying, by the busing, uh, busing method. I see. Well, let me put it this way, that um, the thing that uh, we're going to have to do is to work to create new institutional practices um, so that individuals will have a range of choices. I think that the real goal that we're after is ensuring that all individuals have a like range of choices, regardless of their racial background. So then, if individuals freely and openly want to elect to live in the ghetto, that's their business, as long as you are sure that they have the opportunity to live other places if they so desire.
Yes, I do. I, I think this was the initial breakthrough, and I don't, I eventually Nixon probably would have went over there, but I do think it came much faster because of our visit. From knowing the people as you did, how do you feel the reaction was last night to the UN folks? Pardon me, what was your I said, from knowing the people as you did during your stay there, how do you feel they react to the UN's decision to admit communist China last night? Well, I think they'll be very happy over it, but uh, I, of course, am very disappointed that nationalist China, you know, didn't stay in and was voted out, but I think the people themselves will react very well to it. Honey, how do you feel that China will react to President Nixon? The same way they reacted to us. They're, they're very human people, and they're very friendly people, and I'm sure they'll welcome him with open arms, and especially after this UN, I imagine. Do you feel that China would be a, a friendly country to us? I think they uh, could be. I, there's a lot of political implications that have to be gotten out of the way, but I think if we approach it on a people-to-people -people relationship more, I think that a lot of things can be accomplished. Vern, uh, as you know, all of us in professional sports are so closely associated with you people in the news media. We depend on you so much and we have so much respect for the things that you do that when you suffer a loss, we feel that loss as well. And certainly this is acutely felt in the case of Gene Thomas. So uh, we are staging what we hope will be a successful benefit for him uh, in conjunction with our game with Indiana Saturday night the 30th at, uh, at Moody Coliseum with uh, the proceeds uh, of the game to help to start a, what we hope will be a significant fund for his uh, family. one of the first questions, I, I talked for about 15 or 20 minutes and they started asking questions and it, you know, the question was very good, but the first thing was, you know, the two quarterback system and, you know, if I felt that, you know, we could win a championship with two quarterback system and, uh, of course, I expressed, you know, some some of the things, I'm not sure that, you know, Craig has, you know, mentioned that it's, it's a difficult system and, you know, neither one of us are, you know, particularly crazy about it, uh, you know, put it diplomatically, so it, but it's, you know, it's there and uh, uh, it's, it's got its advantages, but as far as winning the championship, that, that's something that's impossible to determine unless, it, you know, the time comes. Uh, I also mentioned that, it, you know, we're not even midway in the season. There's a, you know, good chance by the time that, you know, that we drive in there when it, what counts now, you know, Chicago counts. So, uh, you know, the things might be changed and the, uh, uh, you know, the system might not be in effect. then. so it's just hard to say and, and hard to make a prediction about that. And I think the quote was, you know, mentioned that I didn't think we could win the championship, and that that isn't true because I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just a you know young guy, third third year in the league, and I, I wouldn't, I have no idea until it, you know the time really came to find out. You're just a young guy, and I noticed that they didn't uh, they didn't blitz the experienced quarterback on Sunday. Yes, I was joking when I made that quote also, and <laughs> people might have taken that wrongly, but I was just kidding because I am, you know, <laughs> I don't you're have the, You're getting on in years. Well, I'm getting experience, but I don't have the, uh, you know, a great deal of experience, of course, and uh, I'm learning, uh, you know, each time I play, and of course, I like to play. I think most of the studies indicate a great deal is needed because uh, the judges, for example, met just a couple of weeks ago and they voted unanimously to reform and to revise the section on the judiciary in Texas. Uh, most of the people who are speaking on the legislature indicate that uh, we just can't meet the problems we face in our state with a legislature that meets every two years. We're not able to solve problems as far as the federal relationships concerned, and uh, these things need to be changed. And uh, we need a constitution that's more uh, responsive to the needs of the 20th century. Do you think you need a constitution to give the legislators more or less control? Most of the authorities have indicated that the legislature needs to, to be trusted more, which would give them more control. Uh, there are many things that need to be specified. For example, I think we should never depart from the pay-as-you-go policy we have in Texas, which means that we don't go into debt to finance our state government. And I think these things should be maintained. But in order to uh, meet a, an issue or a problem that occurs in 1971 right now, in October of 71. We can't do anything about it until 1973, and there needs to be a great deal of flexibility in this area. What do you propose to do about national politics uh, next year? Well, <clears throat> as far as national politics is concerned, I'll continue to support the Nixon administration 
a foot de mieux. Mm. Does that mean that you are going to support them in spite of the United Nations uh, fiasco and despite uh, uh, the wage price freeze? Well, I doubt very much that I'll go out and work enthusiastically for them as I did last year, two, uh, two years ago, three years ago. I doubt very much that uh, I'll personally take part in fundraising campaigns with the same enthusiasm. And without enthusiasm, then you not likely to spark very much. Mr. Nixon has got to know something. He cannot win without the conservatives. Well, do you think the conservatives are going to support him this next year, despite uh, some liberal actions by his administration, particularly HEW? I think conservatives will end up voting for him. But I think there's a difference between a vote for a candidate and support of his policies. Uh, at this point, uh, we will have to have a special session.
we've received reports that some of the ballot boxes already had votes in them. Uh, secondly, you the, mean when they were delivered? Yes, when they were brought out to the polling places. Now we're trying to confirm these reports and we're trying to get affidavits from the people who made, who made the reports. Uh, I think that uh, there's a good possibility the election is being rigged in somebody's favor. Now, whether it be the Dallas Legal Service, the establishment, or whether it be somebody else, we've been getting nothing but the runaround. The people do not have a voting box here. And they, by not having a voting box, box, they do not have a say-so in, in the way things should be run. Uh, first, to start with, they did not give us any leave list. They did not notify the people that were selected. The Mexican-Americans that did apply to run for the Dollar Legal Service was told that only lawyers were going to be allowed to run. When they got, when I got this straightened with Mrs. Jew, a secretary to Mr. Hammond, she said to ask the man to go back. When he went back, they told him he could not run because he was from the district Oak Cliff. Instead of telling this Mexican-American that he could apply as a representative from the Oak Cliff, uh, then elect him to run. There are two areas of concern reported. Some residents of the far north side feel that the circulars announcing the elections should have been printed in Spanish as well as English. Spanish circulars were used on the near north side. The other major complaint filed with the board was by Lemuel A. McIntosh, who is concerned that poll watchers in the area where he was to have been elected may have encouraged voters to cast their ballots against him for his opponent, the Reverend Madison Leonard. Reverend Leonard won the seat. Bob Travis, chairman of the Elections Committee, told me the complaints have come from three election sites, Como, the far north side, and the near south side. The committee meets tonight at 7.30 in the CAA conference room. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. We're, do, we're doing a good job. I, I felt that ever since the first game with Milwaukee, we've played basically pretty good basketball. Uh, Defensively in particular, our offense hasn't been what I'd like it, but I think uh, we're putting in a fairly complex offense, and I think it's still going to take a while before we just, everything runs consistently. I think defense, we've spent most of our time on it, and uh, we're starting now to put our offense together a little bit, but I, I still believe that it's going to take another six weeks to two months to have the kind of club that I'd like to have here in my first year in Dallas. Nonetheless, you, you must be pleased by these consecutive wins uh, even before you go into the game with Utah. Right, there's no question about it, Vern. Our, our players have played hard. This is the number one thing, I think, uh, in professional basketball is getting the players that will come out there and, you know, and try to do it every night, so to speak. Uh, it's very important that you have dedicated players, and, and this, is, this is what we have in our squad right now. We have players with some intelligence and some dedication. They, they want to do the job here in Dallas.